Hey everybody and welcome to the third of our Euros 2020 Soccer Cast podcast. My name's Bina007 and I'm joined by... Hi, uh, this is Bing. Uh, mostly just Bing these days. I watched you channel a long time ago, I guess. <laughs> okay, well, we're without Noah today, but hopefully he'll join us for uh, another episode just as we get to the quarterfinals. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to quickly run through the final group uh, tallies to see whether our predictions were right in any upsets. And then we'll run through the forthcoming round of 16 matches and give some predictions there. So let's get into Group A, which ended up Italy first, Wales second, Switzerland third and Turkey fourth. And I suppose no surprises Italy won, but I was kind of semi-surprised Wales ended up um, above Switzerland maybe. And also we had, we'd gone big on Turkey, which was a big failure. So um, uh, <laughs> any comments on that group? Yeah, so I mean, Italy pl- uh, played really well. Um, I Again, I mentioned in the, sort of the, the, the midway uh, podcast with Noah that I kind of want to see Italy against better opposition because I don't think any of those three other teams were any match for Italy at all. Um, mm-hmm. So I kind of want to see what how they actually fare against a bigger profile team like Belgium or Portugal, which they they may face in the in the quarterfinals. Um, so, but yeah, the Italy played really well. Uh, I think they. I mean, this was a team that didn't even qualify for the World Cup. So I was that's that was why I was hesitant coming into this tournament regarding <laughs> them. Um, but I, I think I think Mancini coached them really well, um, and they they play really fun, attractive football, which you usually don't say about Italy. <laughs> Is Mancini the best coach in the tournament? Uh, he might be one of them. Um, yeah, and you, and you sort of have to understand that at international level, you don't get as good coaches as you get in the club level. You don't get a Pep or a, or even a Mourinho uh, mm. coaching the international side. They just they just pay too much at a club level to ever even consider that option, unless their career goes off kilter a little bit. Yeah, I mean Gareth Southgate wouldn't be coaching a Premiership club, right? So Gareth Southgate coached a Championship team into relegation. <laughs> that says it all, doesn't it? Oh dear. Okay, so that was good. So Group B, Belgium mm-hmm. at the top, which we predicted. Denmark, then Finland, then Russia, which I think also was probably our prediction. Um, any surprises there? Uh, no surprises, but un- un- only how we got there. Uh, yeah. Denmark was started the the last uh, match day at the bottom, uh, but then uh, they 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 played one of the I think one of the game of games of the tournament in their destruction of Russia. Um, oh, that was fun. Yeah, that I was think fun. <laughs> I think Denmark is 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 becoming like a lot of people's favorite teams, considering what happened in the first game with Christian Eriksen. Yeah, for sure, for sure, I agree. Um, the other two teams were, I mean, Finland. They're plucky. They're kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, they just they 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 won against Denmark because of the Eriksen situation. Which I mean, fair play to them. They they they, they that's not their fault. That's UEFA. Yeah, and they said that right. I mean, they were very yeah. humble about it. So yeah. yeah. Um, but in terms of quality, they they won a match against any of the other teams, and Russia was just defensively was just a chaotic. Um, and and yeah, Denmark fully deserved to go through. Um, Belgium, Belgium are obviously the best team in that group. Um, yeah, for sure. I think I think Group C is almost not necessarily more interesting. So I think we would have predicted Netherlands to come top, and then Austria, Ukraine, North Macedonia. But I think Austria has maybe surprised a little bit um, on the upside, Mm -hmm. as have maybe Netherlands. I mean, some of these matches were quite sort of, you know, big victories. Um, Netherlands mm -hmm. putting a lot of goals away against quite weak opposition. Yeah, the problem is I don't think any of these teams in Group C are good. Yeah. Uh, And Netherlands (laughs) just happens to be the best of the bunch. Um, They, they, um, and... They were they were able to so against the Ukraine against the, in the first game against Ukraine they weren't very convincing to me Ukraine went came back from two nothing down to tie them up and then they conceded a goal imme- uh, immediately after that um, hmm. their base, best game I think was against Austria that was a yeah. good game for them North Macedonia their, their last game against North Macedonia was not a game it was a testimonial for North Macedonia's uh, Goran Pandev it wasn't a real <laughs> game <laughs> so I don't I don't even know what we can uh, how we should even consider that result I think that. Netherlands, I think despite their coach, are playing some sort of fun attacking football, at least against these weaker oppositions. But that's another team that I really want to see against a better team. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. They're in that situation. Yeah, Um, I I think Italy are still like several knots better than the Netherlands. Yeah, 100%. And far better coached. Um, Okay, so on to Group D, the home nations group. England somehow managed to end up on top in what should have been a fairly straightforward 
um, group, Croatia, Czech Republic, Scotland is probably the order we would have picked. Um, and yet Scotland did manage to get a point off England, which is just phenomenal. And England have come out in every match and been good for 15 minutes and then basically quite lacklustre. So, I mean... <sighs> Not a particularly inspiring bit of a performance there from the home team. Very boring. Um, yeah. But no goals conceded. Maybe this is what Gareth Southgate wanted. I think, yeah. in fact, that is indeed what Gareth Southgate wanted. Um, um, we'll see how this approach works again uh, going forward. It could very well be that uh, um, against better oppositions, England might even be better. Who knows? Um, if, you, if you look at the sort of the top ranked strikers, like the most expensive strikers, if you were playing fantasy, has Harry Kane been the most disappointing in that bracket? Uh, sure. Although I think, again, I think the the scrutiny on Kane might be a little bit excessive because I think that's this is a this is not a Kane problem as much as his entire England team problem. Mm. I hesitate to even call it a problem because this is I think this is the in intended result of what Southgate wanted. He wanted yeah. to basically score a goal and then shut sh shut and then shut everything down. So it's basically more about the manager than the team. Well, the or only the nice thing tactics. was Scotland very kindly uh, gave us a COVID scare in the squad, so Mason Mount couldn't play, which gave a game to the only Arsenal man in the squad, Bakaya Saka, who it was lovely to see him get a run around. It would be interested in if, if uh, Southgate actually keeps uh, Saka in the team, or let's say player Jaden Sancho. Yeah, um, so Saka played well. I mean, Saka played well. Uh, I think he was the man of the match for that game, right? Yeah. Uh, um, Grealish also played really well. Um, but I don't know if either of these close players, Selke is starting either of those players. Yeah. Uh, so that's a problem or not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then on to Group E, which ended up Sweden, Spain, Slovakia, Poland. I can't remember what we said about this one, but I think I might have expected Spain above Sweden. Yeah, um, you, you had I, a lot a lot more close matches and draws. This was one of the ones, apart from like Spain ruffle stomping Slovakia 5-0. A lot of them were draws. I mean, Spain drawing one all against Poland was shocking to me. Spain drawing nil all to Sweden also actually relatively surprising. Um, I suppose. I feel Spain has been what we expected, right? All the possession, none of the goals, and it's just been very disappointing. Right, and, and, they, and they, get, it, they took them to a ridiculous level in the two group, or the first two group games. Um, they had 85% um, possession against Sweden. Yeah, um, and couldn't score a single goal. Um, they were kind of like the caricature of how England were playing, right? Without the first goal. So. Well, just, I mean, Spain does it in a very different way, right? Because in you know, that they just sort of pass it around horizontally without really getting forward. That was their game against Sweden. Against Poland, I feel like they they added a bit more punch. The problem is they just can't finish for the life of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Slovakia kind of opened the floodgates for them after one of the most stupid own goals I've ever seen in any. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, was, when, that was brilliant. <laughs> when Martin Dubravka decided to volleyball spike his <laughs> the ball into his own goal. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think and then I think Slovakia after that own goal just sort of gave up and allowed Spain to Yeah, but then they did manage to manufacture another own goal like pretty yeah. much 35 minutes later. <laughs> you know? Yeah, at, at, at which point like Slovakia was not even playing anymore and yeah. they kind of just did whatever they want. Um, and yet they still finished above Poland, so there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I, I expected more from Poland. I shouldn't have ever expected any more from Poland. I was wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, have, they have Robin Lewandowski, the best striker in the world, but the rest of their team is very very, very bland. I and still feel that Poland and Turkey both played under where they should have played. Yeah, um, no, I think Turkey definitely, I don't think Turkey didn't even show up. Poland at least showed a pulse in their last game mm -hmm. uh, and tried to attack Sweden and actually forced Sweden for the first time to actually, well, first of all, concede goals, but uh, tried to sort of break their defensive, fully defensive formation to add a little bit of attacking flair. Um, mm -hmm. I think Sweden, um, people always sort of play down Sweden, I mean, for good reason, because they, they are usually very, very boring. Um, but they could be a little bit even feistier. Like they made the quarterfinals in the last World Cup. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they, I think they have even better players this time. Uh, I, think, I think we got rid of Sweden in the last World Cup, didn't we? Uh, yeah, and I think yeah. if, if if England run into Sweden again, which they might actually this time, but once again in the quarterfinals, I think uh, I need to check the schedule. But um, I think Sweden might be even tougher. Yeah, underestimated at their peril, the Swedes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Then we get to the final group, which arguably was the most interesting group half which ended up with France on top, not surprisingly, but only with five points. And then Germany second on four points, then Portugal on four. So I, we, I, I guess I would have put Portugal ahead of Germany and then obviously Hungary at the bottom, but some really surprising results here. I mean, some interesting ruffle stomps, Portugal beating Hungary 3-0, but 
France only drawing with Hungary won all. That was surprising to me. Germany beating Portugal 4-2. Germany only drawing with Hungary 2 all. And then Portugal, France 2 all, I guess, is less surprising, although I would have thought France would have won. So kind of the hardest group and certainly some really interesting close results or ties. I definitely did not think Germany would be... I mean, I've got a lot of German friends in in one of my fancy leagues and they were all like genuinely surprised at how well Germany played on occasion. Um, And because they've ended up second, it means England's going to play them in the round of 16, which could be very spicy. Yeah, we can talk about that uh, in a bit. But um, I think in the group, the only really surprising thing was how well Hungary played. Um, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Hungary gave it to gave it to all three of those uh, in the Portugal game. game like Hung- I mean, it's three nothing, but it was zero zero until the 80th minute. Um, mm. And I think that was sort of what Hungary's only downfall in that they couldn't keep everything up for the full ninety. Um, and and then they sort of all like fell apart towards the end. But like for like eighty, like sixty to eighty minutes, Hungary would just were right up there with those the the big boys. Um, they were challenging all these uh, all these other teams and 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 scoring some pretty gutsy goals. Um, Hungary were almost through until the 80th minute against Germany. They were winning against Germany. Yeah. Um, but I think the other teams, I mean, the other three teams are in terms of the quality. They're so close together that honestly, I mean, sure, you can say that it's kind of surprising here and there, but the fact that they sort of all beat each other up is not, that's ultimately not that surprising. Um, and I don't know, I don't think the order that they ended up is too surprising either. And really, like, Germany's only ahead of Portugal because they beat them. They ended up with the same amount of points and the exact same goal difference. <laughs> um, France, France is going to be like this. Um, and they, they, they haven't really- <laughs> They haven't kicked into high gear yet, but yeah. they, I think that they just, they, 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 they're honestly, uh, they, they, in terms of the talent, um, once you get past the group stages, uh, we'll probably see a stronger and stronger France as we go on, as we saw in the World Cup. Yeah, France and Italy also, I mean, they've got some form, haven't they, of just not really performing until they get out of the group. So let's, I think we'll have a much better idea once we've seen this round of 16 set of matches. So maybe just to end up on the group stages, biggest outperformer and biggest underperformer. I mean, underperformer for me is Turkey, biggest outperformer, um, maybe Netherlands, I guess. I don't know. How about for you, Bing? Uh- under problem, yeah, Turkey. Turkey was just dire. There's just nothing, no other word for it. It was just no. There's nothing good out of that any of those Tur- Turkey games, and now they honestly have the players. Like it's not just like us, me, and and Noe and Yubina saying that Turkey might do better. A lot of big analysts were predicting like Turkey as a dark horse. Ah, mm-hmm. they did nothing. Um, I think uh, biggest uh, overperformer, um, maybe Wales. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I expected, uh, actually Hungary. Yeah. Um, in terms of, in ter- I, mean, I know Hungary didn't make it, but in terms of their performance uh, against all three teams, that are frankly all uh, have won many other many many Euros between them. They perform really well. Cool. Okay. Well, let's let's go into the round of sixteen, and I've got the draw, so we'll do it in the order of the draw, which is not necessarily the order in which the matches are being played. So top of the draw in Seville, we have Belgium playing Portugal, which could be very spicy. I'm assuming we assume Belgium wins that, but it'll Um, be a challenging game. Yeah, no, it's, I don't know if I would necessarily predict Belgium to immediately, I mean, I think they should be favoured, but I don't know if they're necessarily, I mean, you underestimate Ronaldo at your pearl. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It could go either way, right? I mean, it's right, and, and it's not just Ronaldo. I think Portugal. I mean, and this Portugal team has they they were seeing as put a potential uh, possible contender for a reason. Um, they have a lot more talent than just Ronaldo than 2016, and they won the whole thing in 2016. <laughs> I mean, to me, this is the game of the round of 16. It, it's the tightest. It's the most interesting. There's the most talent on the pitch. I think this is going to be really, really good football. Um, probably, uh, hopefully. Um, I think if Belgium scores first, that will make the game probably the most exciting. Mm. Um, I'm a, like Portugal's. The problem with Portugal is that their coach Fernando Santos leans defensively all the time. It's why yeah. they played two defensive midfielders in the first two games, which got exploited hard by Germany. Um, and um, so um, they uh, Santos made some ch- changes in the third game, which I'm I hope they he keeps uh for this game because they play much better against france um but i'm not sure and if Mm. he defaults back to his more defensive mentality about then we'll see how that goes (laughs) yeah (laughs) anyway i think that's gonna be juicy that's um i believe that is tomorrow so that's gonna be quite a tasty game um 
The one that's later today, which I think is going to be really interesting. Actually, I don't think it's going to be really interesting, but it's in London. It's at Wembley. Is Italy, Austria, which I'm assuming Italy wins. But who knows? I mean, Austria is quite plucky. But Italy, that that to me should be much, much easier as an outcome, I would have thought. Uh, I would think so, yeah. Uh, I definitely would favor Italy. I mean, Austria, they're not, not nobody, but they showed very little uh, cutting edge. Um and, and, and uh, they have some talent, but they, I don't think it's enough to beat this Italy team that's this in form. There's also a lot more Italians in England than Austrians, so the the crowd, given that travel restrictions, um, it should look like a home crowd for Italy rather than Austria. Maybe. Um, although honestly, the 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 home, I'm 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 very I'm not really sure how this home advantage thing actually works. It didn't help England that much. <laughs> Yeah, but it sets up sets us up for a brilliant quarterfinal because Italy versus either Portugal or Belgium, I think, would be a phenomenal match. And right. it will, however, be the only time that Italy's been truly tested, whereas yeah. Belgium or Portugal, both of them will have been tested by then. So I think that could be quite interesting. Um, OK, so going further down the draw, the next pairing, you've got France versus Switzerland being played in Bucharest, uh, which I assume will just be a ruffle stomp for France. I don't think ruffle stomp. Um, I think one nothing. <laughs> no France victory. Um, um, one or two. I mean, it would it would be an upset if Switzerland won. Let's be fair. Oh yeah, of course, absolutely. Uh, I don't and I don't think Switzerland can win that game. Mm. Um, well, maybe they. I, I don't know. I I really don't think so. Um, uh, France. Uh, I mean, the, the Switzerland's best players sort of showed up in their very last game. Well, they did show up for the very last game uh, against Turkey. Uh, what Shakiri just yeah starting to turn up yeah. Uh, Shirky finally turned up, um, but uh, I mean, this is still a guy who warms Liverpool's benches uh, against Kylian Mbappe, Antoine Griezmann, N'Golo Kante, and all of that. So um, I think France is way more. That's why it should be more than one 0 It should be two 0 No, um... but the problem is <laughs> the Champ doesn't play that. Doesn't play like that. Doesn't doesn't mm. the Champs France very rarely ruffle stumps anybody. That's yeah, just not, that's, that's, not, that's not in their DNA. So interestingly, the two the this draw is all on the same day. So on the twenty eighth of June, you've got France. Switzerland. You've also got Croatia, Spain, which I think could be really interesting because they're both can be good, but also flawed. And I find that one very hard to call. That's being played in Copenhagen. So again, neither at home. Right. Oh, which which way would oh, I almost feel that could go to penalties? Honestly, I can see that near, I can see that being nil all at the end. And if it goes to penalty, that's really bad for Spain because they've already missed two penalties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Croatia. I mean, right now I'm leaning towards Spain. Um, yeah. Uh, Croatia. I mean, they they again their best players finally showed up to beat up on Scotland. Um, hmm. But going from Scotland to Spain is very different. Uh, Luka Modric, thirty six year old. But uh, class, right? I mean, play to old, him. Older, yeah. but class and Paris. They've got good players. I mean, Croatia's. Of course, they made, not they, made they made the World Cup final for a reason in two thousand eighteen. Even though a lot of yeah. those players, some of those players have retired. Um, they definitely can explain. So the problem is, did the did the last game that's playing that's main play is that actually indicative of them actually finally sort of just at the very least gaining some confidence in front of a goal? Because honestly, yeah. I don't think they played badly at any of these games so far. In they the haven't managed stages. to score a goal, right? I mean, that yeah, it's, this it's... is just and like even again, like even against Sweden and Poland, some of those like they they just they get very close to finishing, and Alvaro Morata just can't finish. <laughs> he has one goal. He has one goal. He has one goal. Um, and and like, but like, if, if Spain needs to score, yeah, they uh, need. To, and if they I, score, they should. They, I think, on balance, they probably are better than Croatia. But it's gonna be interesting to see who goes through. Right, and also, like a lot of these Croatian players are also very familiar with Spain. Uh, Modric yeah. has played most of his career now at Real Madrid. Um, and being the best player at Real Madrid is the mm. uh, Kovacic played a lot of his uh, career in Spain with with Modric. Uh, a lot of these, and, and, and the, the, this is a Croatia is a very experienced team that knows how to. And by this point, knows tournament football. Yeah, they know tournament football. If if anything goes to penalties, you'd back them. They're going to have cooler heads. Yeah. So you're going to end up with an interesting quarterfinal in St. Petersburg, that well-known footballing mecca of France, presumably, against Croatia, Spain, which I think leads to a very tight quarterfinal, which I would expect France to win against either of those two. But it'll be really interesting and another great quarterfinal, mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah, well, I really do want to see the Spain side against France. Um, mm. This is a very young and inexperienced Spain 
uh, team. And you do see sort of in the last game also one important thing that was different about that Spain Spanish team was that uh, they put finally allowed to put Sergio Busquets into that in, into that team. Yeah, one of the older senior players who was part of the generation have won the, the all the all the World Cups in Europe. Also, the player that inspired Noah's fancy team name T and Busquets. Really? Oh, but really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Again, I don't. I didn't. I don't know that because I don't play fantasy. But uh, uh, yeah, Bus- I mean, Busquets has been out due to COVID. <laughs> it is a factor in this. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So, but and his return has definitely made Spain a lot better. So, um. Again, I'm interested to see to to see the Spanish team how how they fare against France. And um, you may well get your wish. Yeah. Okay. So going down to the next bracket, which will all be played on the 29th of June. So you start off with. In Glasgow, Sweden versus Ukraine, which I'm assuming Sweden wins handily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know about handily. Again, you mean you saw mostly how Sweden plays. <laughs> they yeah, they also also... Like Ukraine. That's more a comment on Ukraine than Sweden. In fairness, uh, and it's also just mostly just Sweden's. I mean, it's uh, I guess, but Sweden's tactics doesn't. Again, it's it's the same thing. It's going to be a fairly dull. I mean, I don't think that's going to be the game of the tournament. Like, if you look at the round of sixteen, you've got Belgium, Portugal, would be amazing. Croatia, Spain, I think quite interesting. Sweden, Ukraine is not going to be an interesting match, I don't think. Uh, one nothing. Um, yeah. Well, I'm not going. I'm not going to be. No, I think Sweden just have just enough cutting edge to be able to win that game. Um, I think so. Yeah, especially if they play a uh, Kulusevski, which sort of changed the dynamic in that Poland game. Uh, and, uh, if they actually add him in, into that into that team. Um, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's not impossible for me to see Ukraine win. I mean, just like, no, but I mean, I just, yeah, I, I find it hard to get excited about either of those two no, teams. Not really. <laughs> um, they will be playing if they get through to the quarterfinal. One of them uh, also playing that same day, 29th of June in London at Wembley, England, Germany, which is, uh, you know, I think as soon as England realized they'd be playing Germany, we were basically all me and my, all of my friends here in England supporters like, oh, shit, we're just going to go out on penalties, aren't we? I mean, that's just how it always go down. There is like the, on what paper was... we should be a stronger side, but there is no faith whatsoever in this country that we beat Germany. Well, okay. So do we want to actually go into this a little bit more uh, than the other the other games? I guess. Well, this is the spiciest match of the of the round of sixteen. I feel for historic footballing reasons. Sure. Um, so I'm trying to right now. What I'm looking up is like historical matchups between England and Germany. They always uh, beat us. We beat them once in 1966. They always knock yeah. us out of tournaments and typically okay, so... on penalties. <laughs> Uh, I don't even, I don't know typically on penalties. I think the only sort of, I think the reason why a lot of people think typically on penalties is because the, the two big tournaments that England had got in, uh, got far in, which was uh, World Cup 1990 and, uh, and Euro 1996, Germany beat England on penalties. Um, but I think but it, I, it doesn't matter if statistically that's not the way we go at them. The point is, is that it's so freighted in our national yeah, consciousness. What I was trying to make is that, and usually... also in in the, that of the players. And you look at our big football anthem, Three Lions. I mean, that is all about the years of hurt from Germany, basically. <laughs> sure. I think the main problem I think for the matter is historically Germany's games against England is much more the variety of. World Cup 2010, which Germany won 4-1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we okay. See what- so this is a very... So to analyze this, away from the history aspect, mm. I think history matters, but it, should, it shouldn't it should matter that much. Um, mm. I always tend to probably uh, err on the, on the side of not... Uh, 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 of overlooking it over... These are different players from those generations. Sure, Southgate was the was one of the people who missed the penalty in that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I don't think you can underestimate the generational PTSD. <laughs> I guess, I guess, but like a lot of these, some of these players, like Jaden Sancho, like Phil Foden, they weren't even born when that game uh, happened. Um, but every single press interview they do asks them about it and shows the clip. Which is I mean, again, that's honestly, which, that's honestly why I would play people like Saka because I don't think he gives a shit. And well, uh-huh. and I mean, he also was born after that game was played. Yeah, and, exactly. So, so, so and, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like the English media and some and some of the English public make this to be a much bigger deal than what it actually is. And what mm-hmm. it actually is is two very very flawed teams matching up against each other. Who do you think um, will win? Okay, so let me break in, break this break down a little bit more. England on one side is very very tactically stable in the sense that almost to to a fault. Yeah. Um, they have been incredibly boring and incredibly defensive, but they've gotten results. They only scored two goals, but they've conceded none. Three clean sheets throughout the entire group. Germany, 
chaos. Um, <laughs> they play a formation that they've never played going into this tournament. Um, one that puts several of their best players in the wrong po- in the positions that they're very, very unfamiliar with. They put, well, and they're not unfamiliar with, but probably not the best at. Joshua Kimmich should be their best central midfielder. He's playing at, at right wing back. I know, which is when I picked him for my fantasy team, I didn't realize they were going to not play him in the best position. So. Unfortunately, your fantasy team, whatever aggregator, did not uh, could not read the crazy mind of Joe Kinlo. Uh, um, Serge Gnabry is playing as a false nine. Uh, uh, Kai Havertz is playing as a some sort of a hybrid between a winger and a and 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 and, and, and a forward. I, and he's the problem with Lowe is that after that World Cup failure in 2018, in which they were lose, they, they in which I have to remind you guys, remind you guys that he they, that German team, Germany team lost to South Korea uh, and Mexico. <laughs> no right. offense to South Korea or Mexico. No, no but like the England should consider themselves to be better than those teams, right? Um and that was after and after that tournament, jo- Joachim Lowe have been almost uh completely sort of blinded by how to can how can I how can I rebuild Germany. He, do you think Lowe's gonna play the same formation in the round of sixteen? Or do you think he'll revert to something more conventional? I think at this point he just just doesn't give a fuck. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's out. He's out after he's, this. Yeah, he's out after this. I think I think he's going I guess he's gonna stick to his weird weird uh three four three slash three five two or i don't know what that is um i mean it should problem is so the, again the problem was uh your uh yogi Lowe forced thomas Mueller and uh matt homos into international retirement uh in 2018 mm. but the germany were, were playing so bad that they were again they lost six nothing to spain <laughs> last year um they lost two one to north macedonia in a world cup qualifier <laughs> um and because of all that, he was forced to bring in Thomas Mueller and um and, and, and Matt Homos back from retirement. And and he had no time to actually, you know, find the best tactics with this new team. So he sort of just had to play it as as it goes. Um it's it's a mess. The problem is okay, so the, the so, so 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 England England needs to realize that there are huge weaknesses in this German team and not play scared as an important, but that's a problem because England has kind of been playing scared this entire tournament. Yeah, it's going to be a big turnaround, right? I mean, I don't know. I think we'll know something about their attitude depending on whether they pick Saka or not, because picking Saka is picking someone who's young, not scared, sure, or than up for it. Or if not, so it's not a defensive mm-hmm. choice. Or if not, Saka. so that will tell you something. Yeah, that will tell you something of Southgate's mentality. Or if, um, or if not, Saka at least, or or not Saka, maybe even better is uh, Jaden Sancho. Yeah, who, absolutely. Yeah, at being playing in in Germany all his professional career knows has, them well and has been had the season of his life. Right? I mean, he's yeah, really scored twenty well. goals and fifteen assists that season for for British Dortmund. Nobody in Germany understands why this guy is not starting for England. Or and I no- wonder if it's whether because of COVID and just in general, people haven't seen him. I wonder if people in the England setup like the yeah, coach managers haven't seen him. You, Dortmund was playing the Champions League. The guy pretty far in the Champions League. Yeah, and, true. and like you don't need to go to Germany to watch Dortmund on TV. <laughs> true, true, true. Um, um, and like you shouldn't. And, and twenty goals is not like like ten goals and kind of really good performances that goes a bit under radar. Twenty goals and fifteen assists scream out at you for something. That's <laughs> something, right? <laughs> okay, so if I had to force you, force you to make a prediction, what's your match line prediction? Uh, England. One nil. Two one. Mm, spicy. And so, if England and or Germany got through to the quarterfinal in Rome against presumably Sweden. Do you either England or Germany take Sweden? Because Sweden, I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel Sweden's no, no, weaker Sweden. than Germany. And I don't know they're necessarily weaker than England. I mean, they should be weaker than England, but I don't know if they are. That could be there'll quite be a, tight. Yeah, that will be a very different challenge. Um, yeah. This is an even more tactically stable team that knows exactly who they are. Um, and, pl- and everybody plays a very, very specific role. Um, yeah, I think Sweden will quite fancy that draw and getting either England or Germany. I do. Yeah, um, I think, um, and tal- again, from a talent perspective, England and Germany are better than Sweden. Mm. It's just that, again, how much faith do you have in either managers and how much faith do you have on tactically how these, these teams come together? Yeah, exactly. Uh, because Sweden are exactly who they are. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very stable. They're a good unit. Okay, so the final bracket is the first match is Budapest, Netherlands v Czech Republic. 
Um, it'll be interesting. I think Netherlands should win that day, one nil. Uh, hmm. <laughs> but Netherlands are afraid. I mean, like Netherlands are a bit like Germany. You know, England. I don't know. We'll see. Um, Netherlands has played better. Um, they have a really. I'm wondering if how much they're playing. How much of this is to credit Frank de Boer? How much are they playing in spite of Frank de Boer? Because um, <laughs> uh, like Frank de Boer's results up to this point up to the start of the tournament has been shockingly horrific um uh i don't know if and and and, and his sort of hallmark is that he often should get in his own way um this is um as people who watch major league soccer which is what frank de Boer was coaching before uh he became the, the head coach of the netherlands totally um, I mean, but then Czech Republic, I don't feel are a good team. I genuinely don't. I don't think they're a good tournament team. I, think uh, I mean, I don't know about tournament team. I mean, this specific Czech Republic team. I mean, they have some things going for it. I'm prom- the problem is, I don't know if the, the, their, the, their best traits are suitable for exploiting Netherlands. Weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas I think Netherlands actually match up really well against the Czech Republic. Uh, specific- this is another game that could go to like sort of nil all or 1-1 and end up on penalties, if I were to pick one. If it if it actually if it goes into draw, I think it's something stupid like two like three three or four four. <laughs> <laughs> it goes completely haywire if Netherlands yeah, actually yeah. do mess up. That in like if Netherlands wins, it's probably something like two nothing, three nothing. Um, if they if they somehow mess up, it's like when they is their the defense is suddenly just just collapsed against the Czechs. Um, yeah, they forgot to mark people and set pieces and all these dumb things, and then then the Czechs somehow wind up a bunch of goals. Um, Indeed. And then the final match that we'll cover is actually the first one that will be played. So it's going to kick off in about an hour and a half. And that's Wales, mighty, mighty Wales. Come on, the boils against Denmark. Um, Another slightly stealthy side. I think everyone in England will be very much supporting Wales as another home nations team. And everyone's just fallen in love with Aaron Ramsey. And yeah, I'd I'd hope they'd win, but I don't think they necessarily will. But it could be close. I mean, Wales have really outperformed relative to what we all expected. And could be quite interesting. Um, I don't know. Again, um, I think Ramsey and Bale has somehow uh, recon- uh, conjured their uh, uh, Mag- 2016 form. Because um, like during, during the uh, their actual club seasons, they were not playing that well. well I guess Bale yeah. kind of towards the end of the season, but definitely not Aaron Ramsey. Um, uh, actually, I think the one of the one players I've been overlooked on Wales is Daniel James. Mm-hmm. Really, really, uh, he's been a consistently a problem for every single team in that group. Um, hardworking, runs like a, uh, like a maniac, um, and and he and he he will be he will be a persistent problem for Denmark uh, in their uh, in their wings. Um, I think Denmark. Uh, it's really hard to sort of even gauge what kind of a team Denmark is after something. If it's something like that, I think it's like the like the Eric, the Ericsson, uh collapse happened to them. It's they're now after so that game against Russia. I mean, they're better than Russia, but like their win against Russia was almost seemed ex, like ex, extraordinary. But there is, but it's in some ways like tragedies like that can sometimes really spur a team to yeah, that's the play the play for Ericsson and then the fans yeah. are really behind them. And it you just get a kind of a momentum that's hard to under understate. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. Like well was a feel-good story in 2016 um 2011 2021 kind of but like not of, as much as denmark no it's like, also being played in amsterdam one assumes there'll be a lot more danish fans coming into amsterdam because there won't, was, be, well, there was there won't be welsh fans coming that into was ericsson's uh ericsson's uh original team yeah ax um mm. so um i think denmark um if you just ignore sort of the the, the the narrative and just look at the team Denmark is really is still pretty I mean they match up very well against even mm. some of the better teams in the tournament yeah it's uh, hot. yeah uh they lost Ericsson which is a huge loss the Ericsson was their best is is their best player um but his replacement Christian Damsgaard scored that absolute crazy goal against Russia to get things start things off but admittedly against Russia sure but a, a 20 years old um bright brightest young talent i think in this tournament so far other than maybe spain's pedri um uh, i don't think wales have played against a player like that mm. 
in any of the, their group stages. Um, not even really. I mean, Italy played their beast team, so they didn't, like Wales didn't. And then and wasn't I guess Shakiri, but Shakiri was playing really, really meh. That game. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you can have games that you really look forward to, like Belgium, Portugal, because actually they're both, I think, you know, classy teams. And then a game like Wales, Denmark, where I wouldn't say either of them is like classy, but it could be actually quite an interesting. They're closely matched. Right? Yeah. And they have interesting players. And um, I think Wales are kind of like what Scotland wants to be, mm. like uh, some two or three class players, but in the rest of the rest of functional players that filled their roles very well. I think the problem with Scotland is that they have a few players that just aren't international quality. I yeah, s- I'm still sort of amazed that that Scotland managed to start that guy Lyndon Dykes or whatever his name is all three games, all ninety minutes because he did absolutely nothing. Whereas Wales starts <laughs> starts Kiefer Moore, who is yeah. functional. Who he does he, he's not great, but he does his job. Mm. He does his job well. Um, and 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 they have superstars like Bale, and I guess Ramsey is one the way he played um in the group stages um in daniel james and all these it's a good team i mean it is interesting isn't it because whoever wins this bracket so say netherlands went through yeah against well wales or denmark i mean that it's not the hardest of draws admittedly in baku mm-hmm. you could find yourself ending up in a semi-final and yeah. being like a denmark or a netherlands which is kind of bizarre i guess uh yeah no i mean that's just or how a the... whale you know i mean it, it's it's quite open i feel that's how wales got to the semi-finals in the last euro right yeah but that's what i mean like someone's gonna end up in the semi-finals he's basically not a brilliant team <laughs> that that I mean, it, that's sort of the magic of tournament football they always have yeah. it, there's always one or two surprises if, if it's always just the the same teams wins wins again like the the same the the, the best teams always beat the the the, the lesser teams then the tournament turn out exactly how we predict and it's a really important tournament to me. <laughs> um i mean and the reason why we watch like especially watch tournaments like this is because it's it's it has that potential of surprise um it's like I and mean, it does mean you could potentially get england and wales in a semi-final that would be that would be hilarious i mean i don't think I, it, I want... be hila- yeah. it would just be so yeah. hilarious it because could have all the nations like wales is the one we actually get on with so. I guess. Um, I, 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 I don't know if the, the Welsh fans would say the same thing about you. <laughs> the Welsh your... don't hate us as much as the Scots, definitely. Probably not. Yeah, not. But like they still see. It's. I mean, they still have kind of like also they are still see England as their, their rival. I think in 2016 that game was also kind of spicy. The um, mm. uh, Wales versus England. Um, I mean, definitely I, rugby, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so so that's sort of the magic. But yeah, I definitely agree. That's sort of the 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 interesting. Part part of the bracket. It's kind of like England in 2018 World Cup, right? Yeah. I don't know if yeah. that team was very good, but they ended up in a very favorable draw and that a bunch of teams that could potentially be there got cleared out and then they ended up playing Colombia, Sweden, and then they lost to Croatia. Yeah, which is fair play. We yeah. needed that help. I think everyone in England at the time recognized that we were out over you know performing better than we had any right to so (laughs) so that's another incentive for england if they can get past germany yeah because actually that will be the next game is arguably less hard than beating germany i think for for many reasons um although i could see us going out to a sweden i mean yeah i mean of course look england went out to iceland in the last year (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this, it might this, be mighty Iceland. <laughs> this, this 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 tournament bravado is something that for some reason this is a this is a very this should be a very new thing um and even before the iceland they didn't they didn't even get out of the group stages in the last world in, in 2014 world cup um mm. 2012 uh who did they uh they they who did they lose to uh it doesn't matter um point is england's is not a good tournament team usually <laughs> uh Bye way too much pressure on ourselves and the players and we're too weighed down by history which is why for us you, the Ger- i mean i think i would have preferred us to play like france or um or portugal oh, even the teams in germany because it's 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 a, it's a game we're gonna lose um on that happy note we should wrap this up so i can go and edit and get this out before the round of 16 actually starts yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. <laughs> any other final um predictions or things to look out for being from the round of 16 um let's see ronaldo is uh now just need one goal to be the leader of internet of or the all-time leader of in, international goal scorers mm-hmm. um let's see if he can get another one against belgium i don't know um he has scored three penalties so far so that's at least he's storing penalties uh yep. on, on go is so far the the, the top scorer uh, <laughs> always a great player in in tournaments but 
uh, <laughs> outstanding this in, in this one. Yeah. Uh, and let's see if the, some of these other players can score penalties because like, oh, like over half of them have been missed so far in this tournament. Yeah, it's been a, it's been cagey to use that great football expression or cliche. Well, it's been fun chatting with you, Bing, um, and yep. listener. Hope you're enjoying this. We're going to try and do the same thing after the round of 16. Hopefully, Noah will be back and we can chat about the forthcoming quarterfinals. Yep. Um, and if you guys want to join the Fantasy League, we're playing on the UEFA um, authorised Fantasy League. So feel free to come join us and you can see how shocking my performance has been. Um, but with that, have a happy tournament and we'll speak to you all soon. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>